taking a look at a auxiliary transmission or a remote mounted auxiliary transmission. What we're going to see is that we have an input side here and that input is going to be driving this input gear into the auxiliary transmission. And then we have an output side here, an output shaft. And our drive shaft to our axles would be connected to this yoke right here. And we can see that the yoke is connected to the main shaft inside this auxiliary transmission. So we have an input shaft connected to our input gear and our input gear drives our counter shaft gears. And again, two counter shaft gears to split the torque. And then what we can see is that we actually need to move these sliding clutches for us to engage or disengage different gears. Those sliding clutches right here would be able to slide back and forth. And again, if I were to slide this one forward, what happens, you can see as I turned the input gear, by turning the input shaft, what I did was lock the main shaft that's connected to the output yoke to the input gear and created a one-to-one -one direct drive. If I were to move it back, what would happen is the path of power would come in to the input gear, travel to the counter shaft gear, down the counter shaft, to this gear where it's now coming into the main shaft because the main shaft is locked to this spur gear right here. And so the path of power would come in, go to the counter shaft through, come in back to the main shaft and the main shaft now would drive my output yoke. And we can see now they do not, they're not rotating at the same direct drive speed. There are other shift forks as well. There's two shift forks inside of this auxiliary transmission and that's the ability to move the front sliding clutch and move the rear sliding clutch. So again, all I'm doing is saying the path of power as I move the sliding clutch rearward is allowing my input gear to drive my counter shaft, the smallest gear on my counter shaft to drive the largest gear on my main shaft creating the deepest reduction. You can see the varying speed from the input gear to the output yoke. And again it can move forward and now the ratio simply changes. And so what we're able to see is that we're creating one, two, three and a direct drive. So we're able to create four different speeds in this auxiliary mounted transmission or remote mounted auxiliary transmission. Those shift selections are made through these forks that are inside the cover right here. And so what this is, is this is called a power tower configuration where we have a PTO a multi-speed PTO mounted on top of a remote mounted auxiliary transmission and my input gear coming off my input shaft not only drives my counter shafts it also drives the shaft that's going to be driving the PTO. And so what we see behind that gear right here is our shift forks and our shift forks are operated by our lever right here so we can see this is my actuator for my front fork, this would be my actuator for my rear fork to be able to make the selections of the four-speed auxiliary remote-mounted transmission.